Hey guys, happy Sunday. Um, this weekend has been so fun. Uh, for those of you that joined us yesterday, we got to have our special event, our NOAA lockdown event, and I was so excited. There were so many of you there. We had some guests, and I hope you guys had a lot of fun. Uh, today, we're going to join into the book of Acts. Uh, you should have gotten a craft this week that give you a little heads up about what we're going to discuss. And if you're not, please get a hold of me. Email me, ashley at parkerofnewchristian.org, and I'd love to send it to you. Well, today we're talking about Paul. And Paul is a missionary. He's someone that goes out into the world and he tells them all about Jesus. And a lot of times when we think about these missionaries or Paul's missionary journey, you might want to start thinking about when he's speaking in the synagogues or when Paul goes out to the places of great learning and he starts preaching to these Greek and Roman philosophers or maybe when he's out in the street. But I mean, so much of what Paul does in proclaiming the gospel actually happens when he's in jail and when he's arrested. I mean, a lot of our New Testament is actually written by Paul in jail. And today we're going to talk about a time when he was under arrest. Uh, Paul was being brought forth before a king. His name is Agrippa. And the reason he's in jail is these trumped up charges. They're not legitimate. He could get on no evidence thrown out, really. And so you would think, oh, there's this king. I could tell them. If it were me, I'd be like, hey, guys, I didn't do it. Here's the reasons why. Here's how you can prove I didn't do it. Please let me go. But that's not Paul's prerogative. That's not Paul's important point of view. When he sees the king, who is a Jewish man, he starts by talking to him about his qualifications as a great Jew, because it was Jewish officials that got Paul arrested for talking about Jesus, basically. And he keeps talking and he keeps explaining this. And knowing that the main issue all these people have and these charges that are trumped up are really just because he's teaching Jesus. So after talking about the promises God has to the Jewish people, he says this, chapter 26, Verse 7, to this promise, our 12 tribes earnestly serving God night and day, I hope to attain. Hope to attain. For this hope, say Kena Griffin, I am accused by the Jews. Why should it be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead? So Paul is using this platform in front of a king, in front of someone that could make a huge impact in other people's lives. And he starts telling his story, and not the story about why you shouldn't be in jail. Not that story. He tells his story, his personal testimony about how he was walking the road to Damascus and he met Jesus. And he starts explaining how his life is impacted and how precious Jesus is, who is our Savior. And I wonder what you guys do with that. When someone's asking who you are, what's your story? Do you say, I play soccer, I'm good at art? Do you say that you like certain TV shows or doing certain things? All of them are a part of you. But do you start your story by saying, I am a person who sinned and I met Jesus and Jesus made my life better. I found Jesus and he brought it to me. I'm saved and you can be too. And I know sometimes this idea of a testimony, it sounds kind of daunting. And the older you get, I think the, the weirder it is. If you're someone like you right now, if you're watching this video and you're, you know, who this is demographic for, if you're a kid, and you're watching this video and you go, you know what? 
A Ashley, I, I'm in fourth grade and I'm baptized. I didn't do horrible things. I mean, like as an adult, you'll hear people telling these amazing testimony stories, how you were in jail or you were doing this crime or this bad thing. And then you found Jesus and your life turned around. That's not my story either. I started going to church as far back as I can remember. But just because, you know, I don't do, you know, stereotypical bad things um, over the course of the part of my life before the church, before accepting Jesus, before getting baptized, before doing those things, it doesn't mean that my life hasn't impacted. I mean, my story is I was a little girl who was super lonely. But I always knew Jesus loved me. I dragged my parents to church. I, I can remember literally getting dressed in some nicer clothes. My church didn't really require it. I just had a thing at the time about it. And I grabbed my Bible and go, we're going to church in third grade and going and standing in the driveway until people started following. Um, church was my safe place. I was teased, I was made fun of, and, and life was really hard, but I knew Jesus loved me. And even if I didn't have any other friends, I had Jesus. And he was with me as I grew up, as I took these steps in my own faith. He spoke very clearly to me, not like in an audible voice, but very clearly through multiple things happening that, you know, I should be serving kids. And, you know, this isn't the way I thought I would be serving kids. 2020 is a little weird, but here I am talking to you guys right now. And he has been through my life. And I know that Jesus has taken my sins and he's loved me. And I've accepted him and I've followed my life after him. And, and through that life, there have been ups and downs, but he has led the way. And through being a part of the church, I've met my husband and I have my daughter and I have all you guys. And I am blessed by Jesus. And, you know, my story is not as dramatic as Paul going through Damascus and being blinded and being healed of his blindness by Ananias and running away and becoming this missionary. But my story is my story. And your stories are your story. And no one needs to be ashamed of your story starting out earlier. In fact, if you ask the people that have the really cool stories, uh, they wish their testimony would be more like yours. And it's not that you aren't going to have your moments where are difficult either. Even if you know Jesus from day one. Well, Paul is standing before him, and he tells the king all of these amazing things. And Paul, man, is there, and he says in verse 23, Continuing the end of explaining who Jesus is, Christ would suffer. He would be the first to rise from the dead and would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. Now as thus made his defense, Festus, that's the governor, that's there by the king, said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning is driving you mad. But he said, I'm not mad, most noble Festus, but I speak the words of truth and reason. For the king before whom I also speak freely knows these things. For I am convinced that none of these things escapes his attention. Since this thing was not done in the corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do believe. And Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuade me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God not only you, but 
all who hear me today might also might become both almost and altogether as I am, except for these change. So Paul uses his moment. He's standing right there before King, who has the ability to maybe help him out. He doesn't take these moments to be concerned about himself. He proclaims the gospel, and he does so by explaining Jesus and raising from the dead and who he is, but also what Jesus has done for him. So in your lives, guys, people might say you're crazy, like Festus, or they might be like King Agrippa and actually see something amazing coming out of you, whether they outright believe you or they just are drawn to what you have to say and will listen. So this week, I'd love for you guys to think about your story. If you want help writing it out or thinking of ways to word it, you can let me know. But I would love to hear your stories. Tell me how you became a Christian. How did you find him? How do you know him? And what is he doing in your life right now? And then I want you to tell someone, and not just me, I want you to tell someone out there that you love and care for what Jesus has done for you. You can tell a Christian, but it would be amazing if you had a friend or a relative that wasn't, and you told them what Jesus has done for you and your story. So I'm going to pray for you guys right now. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my friends. And I thank you for the words of Paul and Luke that wrote them in the book of Acts. I ask that you help us know our stories better. I ask that you help us proclaim our stories of what you've done and your story, what you did through your son on the cross. Pray this in Jesus' name. Help people find you through it. Amen. So thank you guys for joining me this morning. I'm so happy to see you. Uh, just a reminder, we are still in the summer challenge. And even though it's August, you can still start. You can earn points and get that trophy. At the end of the month, you're going to email me your point values and what you've done. If you have more questions about that, again, my email is ashley at parkavenuechristian.org. I will see you guys later, and we will have another video waiting for you next Sunday. Talk to you guys soon, guys. Bye.